sometimes in a behavior management plan, it's the adults that need to change their behavior more than it is the child. I'm on Shelly Beach. I've just gone for a walk with some of the peeps from work. They've headed back to the office and I thought I'd get into this topic. When things go wrong for kids, uh, particularly at school, often it comes to a point where someone says, we need, to, we need to do something about this behavior. And they aim to set up a behavior management plan. So another one of these topics, I talk through the ABC iceberg, and that's a good way to look through this behavior management plan to think about what we can do about it and get a holistic view. But for this one, I wanna talk about when sometimes the biggest responsibilities aren't about changing the child or what the child's gonna do. And uh, actually the child, changing the child is usually what the focus is. So let's start out with a story. I got called into a school because the guy I was working with was having troubles paying attention in class, he was quite distracted, and he was getting into fights on the playground. I walk into the classroom and there are pictures on all four walls, letter strips, multiplication tables, everything on all four walls. On top of that, there's fishing line running diagonally from each of the corners with body murals that they had drawn around the kids and drawn faces on them and hung them down in between and around the kids. And the teacher said, I just don't know why he's not paying attention. I was like, what, huh, what, who's not what? I couldn't pay attention to her in that room. It was ridiculous. So I knew why he wasn't paying attention. On top of that environment, he was seated in the back row. He didn't understand what he was doing and he hadn't connected with the teacher. He wasn't engaged in the work. So that's one scenario. Later on in the IEP meeting and the behavior management section, she said, I know every day at lunchtime, he's gonna go on that playground and he's gonna hit another kid. And I looked at her and I wanted to say this, but I bit my tongue, but I really wanted to say, if you know that every day at lunchtime, one of your students is going to physically hurt another student, then you need the behavior management plan if you let that happen. We are adults, we need to take responsibility for how we support kids. Kids are kids. They don't have full executive functions. They say us poor guys don't get full executive functions till we're 25, but certainly kids need to be closer to that seven mark to really be using that top-down control independently. But we put all this pressure on kids to be able to do it. We set up social stories, we tell them the rules, this kid could tell you the rules forwards and backwards till he was blue in the face. But under the heat of the moment, when he was out on that field and he had a disagreement over the rules or what had happened, he flipped his lid and he couldn't remember what he needed to do in that moment. And it ended up poorly for him most times. So what do we do with that? Well, in OT, we use a model called the PEO model, the Person Environment Occupation Model. And what that model says is when we're trying to support our families that we work with, and, and for me, it's the kids that I work with, yes, the person's a big component. So how can we support that child to be more adaptive in those situations? How can we support them to have a better ability to maintain self-regulation, to be able to problem solve and plan in that situation, or seek out help? Sure, absolutely, that should be a big part of it. Making sure they understand the expectations and the rules of that setting. But beyond that, there's the E and the O, the environment and the occupation. So the environment is the surroundings, and we talked about in, that in the classroom, um, but also the social environment, and that's us adults that are there to support kids. And then the occupation is the tasks that they're doing. Is it meaningful to them? Can they connect with it? Do they understand how to do it and feel successful with it? And there's lots of ways we can adapt that to help kids too. So out on the playground, what we did for this kid was we said, he needs an ally and he needs an adult ally that can coach him through it. So at lunchtime, he got given a little note that he had to deliver to the teacher on duty. The teacher on duty wore a bright yellow vest and he had to find the teacher, which was pretty easy, straight to that teacher at the start, hand the note, and the teacher got down on his level and said, hey, Johnny, hey, Johnny, good to see you. Um, thank you for bringing me this. If you need anything, I'm right here. You'll just have to look out for my bright yellow vest. 
and I can come over and help you with anything. If you feel like things are getting a bit tough, come and, come and get me and I can give you a hand. And then Johnny went off to his group and the teacher could watch exactly where he went and the teacher could monitor that. And if the noise level went up or the activity level went up, then maybe the teacher would hover a bit closer and see if they needed the teacher's support. And that really helped things out from that day forth. So we can put all the pressure on the kid. We can teach them the rules and they have to follow through and we can watch them fail again and again and again because when their lid flips, they're not able to access that knowledge. Or we can also look at how a supportive social environment particularly, us as adults can be there to coach them through it, to support them in the moment, to give them strategies, to help them rehearse what strategies they're gonna use just before they need them and create a successful outcome for that child in that particular scenario. So uh, just wanted to get that message across. Please don't put all the pressure on the kid to change, particularly if you see that your plan is not working again and again and again, make a change. And often it's us that need the behavior management plan so we can help those kids that we're there to take care of. Thanks for watching my video today. If you wanna see more of these videos or some of the move about activities or some of Alexa's power series, please hit that red subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of our videos. And I'll catch you all next time.